All right, let's run through 8182, if you don't mind. The 187? What? Oh, what did I say? 187. Page 8182. 8182. All right. So let's see. All right. Is there any questions on one or two? Two. Two? All right. <laughs> All right, all they want you to do on this one is solve it. So I subtract 3x from both sides first. So that gives me x or 1x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 2. And I get uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay, so the interval notation would be a square bracket at negative 5 going to infinity. If I put it on a graph, I'd have negative 5 here, 0 here. I have a circle, so we concluded, and shading this way. And then the interval notation is negative 5 to infinity. Okay, yeah, there's more than way, a couple ways to do that part. Questions on 3, 4, 5, 6? 3, 4, 5, 6. What do we do on 3, 4, 5, 6? Plug it in. Plug it in, right. And you see if it's what? True or false? If it's true, it's a solution. If it's false, it's not. Anybody need to see 3, 4, 5, or 6? Yeah. Five. Yeah, buddy. Number 5. We have negative 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so that's an x value. That's a y value. Let's plug them in. True or false? True or false? False. Oh, did you repeat that? Staying up there. So this is false. So this is not a solution. So, yeah. Four? Okay. So number four. So four x minus y is greater than two. And we'll see if this is a solution. So x value, y value. False, so not solution. Anything else up to number six? We do the state. Six. We have uh, negative eight x minus y is less than four. Zero two. Okay, that's an x. That's a y value, All right? Shh. A little too much talking. Zero minus two is less than four. It's negative two less than four. That's true. Say that. Yep. 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 All right. Um. Seven, eight, or nine, or all of them. All of them. All right. So you're looking at your graph, and let's see if I can draw so this for seven, eight, and nine. We'll use the same graph. That graph is. This and then shade it over here. Oh, that is all over here is all shaded, right? Okay, and then some other values that we know. X uh, three, so three zero, and this is at negative six zero. Maybe that doesn't look like it. All right, so use the graph for the inequality. Y, the point 3, negative 2 is not a solution. 3, why is this point not a solution? Negative 2 is 
not in the shaded region, right? Yes. So that's not in the shaded region. So that's number seven. Number eight, explain using the graph solution equality why the point three, two is a solution. So three, two is here. Well, it's in the shaded region, so it's got to be a solution to the problem. If you plugged it back into the, whatever the equation was, uh, it would give you a true statement. This one would have given us a false statement if plugged in. This would give you a true statement. And then which points are solutions to the inequality? So 0, 5, let's see, 0, 5, x, no, negative 3, negative 4, that is, and then 5, negative 2, that here, that's not a solution. So that's just how you do it. You're just looking at the graph. You're plotting the point. If the point falls within a shaded region, it's a solution. If it's not, uh, question no. This is not one of the questions on the homework, but what if this point right on the line was given? Would it be a solution or not? No, why not? It's on the line, but something about the line makes it not a solution. So because the original equation is this or this, that's dotted. And dotted means you don't include the line. So if it falls right on the line, then it's dotted. You can't use it. All right, yeah. Oh, it's just greater than, less than, more than, or less than, or, well, as far as the graph goes, yeah. If my sign flips over, the, the pink here would be on the other side. So the original equation to this that was graphed, they had it was 4x minus 2y is less than 12. If I flip the sign over, I'd have the opposite side of that dotted line shaded. So it, it changes which region you're talking about. No, no, not at all. The only thing that changes is where to shade it. Did I answer your question? All right, uh, questions on 10, 11, or 12. Ten, eleven, twelve. 12. Yeah, 11. 11, y is less than negative 6. There's a horizontal line through negative 6. Got it. Okay, so if you pick zero and plug it in, it's zero less than negative six. And it is not. So we shade it over. Anything up through fifteen? Okay, this one is all set up for us to do the cover method on, agree? So zero comma blank, blank comma zero. This is an x value, so cover up this x value, that's gone. So negative two y equals six. So y has to be two times negative three. Negative two times negative three gives me positive six, so that's negative three. And then this is a y value. If I plug it in for y, that's gone, so x equals 6. Is this a solid or a dotted line? Solid. Solid, good. It's a solid. Good test point would be 0, 0. Yes? All right, so let's plug 0, 0 and see what happens. I get 0 minus 2 times 0. Is that greater than 6? Is 0 greater than or equal to 6? No, that's false. So you shade the other side of the line. What else? I'll do 16 and 17 in a minute. Anything else up through 15? Yeah, 13. So your y is less than 2x plus 2, right? So this is already set up in y, or slope-intercept form. 
So that gives me the point zero 0.02. And then I have a slope of up to right one. So it's dotted. Figure out where to shade, so I'm going to pick 0, comma 0, that's our test point. Put 0, 0 in. If 0 less than 2, that's true. So the shade the side 0, 0 is on, so that's down here. Anything else up through number 15? We A OK there? Yep, 16 and 17. Here we come. All right, so number 16. So things I know about number 16, it's dotted. I have a B value of negative 2. You agree with that? It looks like I have a slope of up 1, right 2. And I got all that information just from looking at the graph. Agree? Where the 0, 0 is located gives us a true statement. Why would I say that? Oh, because. Okay. If you look at number 16, 0, 0 is part of the shaded region. So 0, 0 gave me a true statement. Okay, so let's use y equals mx plus b. And the things that we need to figure out. Y is going to be fine. We know that slope has to be 1 half x. B has to be negative 2. The last thing I need to do is I have to figure out is this less than or greater than? Yes. Okay. So it's a dotted line. So it's either this or this. So let's figure out which one it is. If I take this equation and I plug 0, 0 into it, Is 0 greater than negative 2 or is 0 less than negative 2? It's greater. So that's what the sign has to be. This is our equation. Okay? 17. 17, it's a solid line. So it's either this or this. Is that right? It appears that we have a y-intercept. Our b value is 1. And our slope, if we look at it, we have to find two points on there. So it looks like if I go up 2 and write 3, if I go up 2 and write 3, I get to another point. Do you agree? OK. Is 0, 0 part of the, re uh, part of the solution? Yeah, so this is. This is uh, this gives you a true statement, so it's part of the solution. So let's figure this out. Again, I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. Things that we will start need to figure out is this. We got that and that, so let's plug in. So y, don't know. Slope is 2 over 3x plus 1. So let's take that. Let's figure out what sign works. So I'm going to take I'm going to take 0, 0 and plug it in here. So I'm going to plug 0 here, 0 here, and that's going to tell me whether this is which one of those signs, okay? So zero, blank, we don't know what that is. Two thirds times zero plus one. Is zero bigger than one or less than one? Less than one. So this sign has to go this way and it's equal, so there's our equation. Good deal? So I found that one of my y-intercepts, mm -hmm. and I counted up two and right three, and that found me another point on my graph. Yeah. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right, if you would, make sure your names are on those and pass those forward, please.
for a homework effort. All right. This is what I want us to do. I would like you all to start working on page 83. No, we're working on this in class, 1 through 14. I want you to work on this for a few minutes. It's just, it's the very first page. It's the very first page, and we will go over this at 9.55, whether you're done or not. I'm not telling you that yet. I don't. I haven't decided yet. So I want you to work on that for right now, please. And I'll be right back. I want to go get your <coughs> quizzes. Let's uh, let's look at the quiz real quick. Let's take a look at the quiz. So just for your your information, so problem number one, the answer, the slope is one over three. Problem number two, the slope is one. Problem three, the slope is one half. The y-intercept is three. Of course, you could have it as zero comma three. Problem number four, the slope is four. The y-intercept is zero. You could also have it as zero, zero. Problem number five, when you graph number five, your y-intercept is one, and your slope is down two, right one. That's what number five should look like. Number six, Two, your slope is up one, right three. Okay, any questions on the first page? One through six. If I made an error in your favor, let me know and I'll get you the points back. If I made an error and didn't mark something on yours wrong, don't let me know. We good? Can I move on? All right, uh, let's see. Number seven, we have 2x minus 3y equals 12. So this is cover method. So if I cover the y value, I'm going to go 0 comma blank and blank comma 0. So that's an x value. Cover that up. Negative 3 times y equals 12. So that's basically negative 4. So 0, negative 4, right there. This is a y value. Cover that up. So 2 times what number gives me uh, 12, and that would be 6. that looks like. Number eight, the cover method again. Okay, that's an x value, so I'm going to cover that up. So two times what number gives me six, and that would be three. It's a y value, so let's cover that up. So x equals six. All right. Number nine, we're using the point slope. So our point that we're going to graph is opposite here, so that's negative two. Opposite here, that's positive four. I have a slope of one half. We get that, and then I go up one, right two. Number nine looks like. Number 10 is x equals 3. So that's a vertical line through 3. Just like that. Any questions on that second page? And the back page. We had some matching we had to do. So I think the best way to do this is on number 11 is y equals 2x minus 4. So you got to think about what this graph looks like. One, two, three, and four. Up to right one. Okay, so that would match up with graph B, and that would then match up with uh, slope is two and y is B and F. Okay, number twelve. If you graph it, if y equals one half x plus four, we have a y-intercept of four. And then you go up one, right two. Looks like that. So that would then be graph D. And you have a y-intercept of four, so then that's E, right? D and E are the answers to number 12. 
13. We have 2x plus y equals 4. Use your cover method. You find you have uh, 4, 4, 2 here. That's what this looks like. Okay, that goes along with graph C. And graph C goes along with G, slope of negative 2 y intercept. So G, C and G. And then 14, by order of elimination, you should be able to figure out it's A and H, but just in case you didn't. Uh, let's see. That's set up as a cover method. We get Y equals negative 2. Cover method here, we find X is 1 half in between, like that. And that would then go along with graph A. And that would go along with H. Isaiah, did I make a mistake on yours or his? He, he got the bonus point. I like him better. Was there any errors that I made on yours that you think I, or anything on that you need me to go over? You all right? All right, let's run through, let's run through um, 1 through 14. Okay, so I'm on page 83. Let's run through 1 through 14. Let's talk about it. Problem number one, is 5 comma 4 a solution, yes or no? How do you know? You plug them in, so you get 5 minus 4, which is 1. Is 1 greater than 2? No, so it's not a solution. Problem number two, is negative one, negative four a solution? So if you go negative one plus negative four, you get negative five. Is negative five less than negative three? Yes, it is. So it is a solution on number two, so that's true. Okay. Problem number three, is two comma two a solution to five x plus y is less than or equal to 12? Well, if you plug 2 in and 2 in, you get 12 is less than or equal to 12, being it's also equal to it. So yes, it's a solution. If you didn't have the equal sign, it would not have been a solution. Problem number 4, plug 3, negative 1 in. So you have 3 plus 3 is 0 greater than 6. No, it's not. So false. Number 4 is false. It's not a solution. Any questions on how to do 1, 2, 3, or 4? Yeah? Um, so when you plug them in, uh would you subtract um, after you you do the minus. arithmetic that's there? Okay. That's all you have to do. So if you're if it's already a minus and you're plugging in a negative, you have minus negative and addition comes plus. All right, five through ten. All you're doing on number five is let's see, uh, one comma zero. That is not a solution. It's outside the shaded region. Number two, bless you. Negative one, negative one falls in the shaded region. So yes. 0, 0 is right on the line. Is it a solid line or a dotted line? Solid. Solid. So it's a solution. Is that all right? If it was dotted, it wouldn't be. Negative 3, 1 falls in the shaded region. So yes, a solution. 2, negative 4. Looks like it falls right on the line. So is it a solution? Yeah, it's a solid line. So it's a solution. And then 0, 3 falls not in the region. Okay, any questions on 1 through 10? 1 through 10. Okay. Uh, 5, 6, and 7. 5, 1, 0 is not. 6, negative 1, negative 1, yes. And 0, 0, yes. Which is different than 1, 1. All right. I think I was supposed to be number 11, but it, they have it written as number 1. Does everybody feel comfortable that the cover method works on this one? Yes, sir. Is anyone still sitting there going, how do you know? Okay, so that's an x value. You're plugging that in for the x value. So negative 2 times y equals 20. So that has to be negative 10. So 0, negative 10 is way down here. And then this is a y value. You plug that in. So 5 times x equals 20. So 5 times 4 equals 20. 
Solid or dotted? Dotted. There's one point right there. There's another point if you graph it correctly. Your third point will come from, did you shade the right region? So I'm going to take 0, 0, because it's definitely on one side or the other. Plug it in. So 5 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Is 0 greater than 20? No, over here is all false. So you shade the other side of the line that the 0, 0 is not on. Number 12, if y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 9, how do I do this problem? How do I graph it? y equals mx plus b. So that's your y-intercept right there, right? And then you go down 3, right 1, solid or dotted line? Solid. Solid. So there's your two points so far. Your third point, figuring out if 0, 0 works. So plug 0, 0 in. Is 0 less than or equal to? That's going to be 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 9? That's true. So what does that mean? Shade this side. If it's false, you shade the other side of the line. 13. 13, they have kind of a little goofy. So what I would do with 13, I, was, I would do this. I would say, let's get y by itself. Notice what I'm doing. And then I'd rearrange the order of it. So now this is slope-intercept form. Agree? My y-intercept on this one is negative 3. From there, I'm going to go up 2, right 3. Solid or dotted? Dotted. Okay, is 0, 0 a test point? Yeah, so plug 0, 0 back into the original. So I get 0 is greater than negative 9. Is 0 greater than negative 9? Yes. It is. It's to the right of it. You'd rather owe somebody nothing than owe them $9, right? And then number 14. Negative x minus 2y less than or equal to negative 6, or just less than negative 6. This is cover method, yes? Okay, so that's an x value, so that becomes 0. So negative 2 times what number gives me negative 6? That would be 3. And then this one, that's a y value. So negative x equals negative 6, so that has to be positive 6. Solid or dotted? Got it. Zero, zero is a good test point. So we're plugging in. Negative zero is zero. Minus two times zero is zero. Is zero less than negative six? No, that's false. So down here is false. So I shade over here. Okay, that gave me a false statement. So I shade the side that doesn't have zero, zero. What do you think? Perfect. We've got just enough time for this last one. Number, so we're looking at a, a school club ordered large pizzas at $12 each and regular pizzas at $9 each. Not fair that we're talking about food right now because I would love to have some pizza. The club can spend no more than $180 on the order. The equation modeling that is 12x plus 9y is less than 180. So 12 is talking about the large pizzas, 9 is talking about the regular pizzas. And you can't spend more than 180 bucks. Interpret the x and the y intercept within the context of this problem. Ooh. Okay. So cover method is going to work. Okay. This is an x value. So that means this is going to be 20. So 0, comma 20. And then this is a y value. What's 180 divided by 12? How much? No, it's about 15. It's 15, exactly. Thank you. That's 20. It's dotted. All right. What does 
this, where it crosses the x-axis, what does that mean in the context of that problem? What does that what does that point mean? 15 comma 0. What does this mean? I will tell you that this is the large, this is the regular as far as pizzas go. What does 15 comma 0 mean to you? Say it. What's the x value? The x is the large, isn't it? <coughs> so I can order I can order all 15 pizzas being large. And that covers my $180. What does my 20 up here, what does this represent? I can order how many what? Regular pizzas. So I can order 20 regular pizzas and spend less than 180. I can order 15 large and spend 180. Okay? Or any combination in between. Am I going to order a portion of a pizza? No. Okay? And, you know, you always get the one kid, well, yeah, you can go get a slice. Yeah, we're not doing that. When was the last time you said, hey, we're having a pizza party. Let's get John over here a slice of something. And everyone else gets to share the whole pizzas. Doesn't work that way. Okay. Is 10, 5, is 10, 5 a solution to this problem? What do you think? How do I, what, how do I know if this is a solution? That means I'm ordering... 10 large and 5 regular pizzas. Is it a solution? What do we have to do to see if it's a solution? Plug it in. So if I plug it in here, I'm going to get 120 plus 9 times 5 is 45 is 165 less than 180. So that creates a true statement. This creates a true statement. Does this create a true statement? Yes. So is this a solution? Yes. yes. Solution. Good. Okay. All right. I would like you guys for next time. This is on page eighty-four. I just need you to finish up problem seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. That's all your assignment's going to be. Okay? Sound good? So things that are in place. Tomorrow, we will go over these. I will go over a little bit of the practice test that's in your book, and then I'll give you the take-home version of the test. Did any of you need me to get you points back on the test? Did I make an error? Um, I think it's, um, I wrote that. No, that's yours to keep. I use it as a study guide.